Hello, everyone. I wanted to share this piece of inspiration with you. I actually shared this with my local assembly on Mother's Day, just sort of as a short, very short, inspirational uh, message for Mother's Day just to encourage the mothers. But I'd like to share it with you because I think it has a deeper meaning. So I hope that someone is blessed. I, I It comes from the story about Hannah in the first book of Samuel. So I'll just read the scripture and um, I'll share my thought with you. I wanted to start First Samuel, the first chapter, the fifth through the tenth verses, and then I'm going to skip over to verse 19 and 20. He begins the reading of the Lord's word. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Are not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Verses 19 and 20. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. So far the scripture. I just want to, my thought was the cry that changed God's mind. Now, this story is about Hannah and um Hannah was the wife of Elkanah. Elkanah had two wives, Peninnah and Elkanah, and I'm sorry, and Hannah. And Hannah was barren. Peninnah, the other wife, was able to bear children. Although Hannah was barren, Elkanah loved her very, very, very much. He loved her. The Bible says that when they went up to off to do the offerings, the, the yearly sacrifice that he also gave her a worthy portion of meat because he loved her so much, even though she was barren. And we know, um, some of us may know in those days, it was the most horrendous thing for a woman to not be able to bear children for her husband. And in those days, it wasn't IVF and egg freezing and all of the modern technologies we have today. So they had to depend upon God if this was their plight. So Hannah was not able to have children and Peninnah was able to have children. And Peninnah taunted Hannah about the fact of her inability to bear children. Now, as I read this passage, the thing that struck me is the fact that the Bible states that the Lord shut up Hannah's womb. The Bible does not state that she was barren due to a sickness or family issue. It simply states that the Lord, God himself, shut up her womb. Then I thought to myself, what do you do in a situation where you feel helpless because the one who is the author and finisher of your faith, the one who is Jehovah Nisi, your banner, and will fight injustice for you is the one who is responsible for your suffering. What do you do when it comes from God? What do you do when the wicked are prospering all around you and you are in what seems to be a holding place? 
the place where you cannot understand what God is doing or why he is allowing this to happen. The Bible states that Hannah wept sore before God. Some translations even state that Hannah cried bitterly before God. But we know that Hannah was desperate for God to answer her and to come into her situation. According to the scriptures, after the family finished eating, Hannah rose up to go and pray. She did not find a friend to gossip with or complain to. Hannah went to the source, which was God. In Hannah's desperation, she knew that her only hope was to grab the heart of her creator. So she wept bitterly before him in order to get his attention. She needed God to do something. Hannah desperately reached for God, offering her tears and bitterness of soul as a sacrifice. Sometimes that's all we have is our tears. The Bible says in Psalm 51, 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken heart, are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite spirit. O God, thou wilt not despise. It was Hannah's desperate pursuit after God, which caused God to answer her prayer. Second Chronicles 7, 14 states, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Hannah, a Jew, was part of the lineage of those that were called by God's name. She humbled herself and prayed instead of fighting with Peninnah. And she sought the face of God and God healed her land, which was symbolically represented by her body and its barren state. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, the 13th and the 14th verse state, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. This is what God is saying to you. If you seek him for an answer, as Hannah did. God himself will come and rescue you from the judgment that has been pronounced upon your life. Your sincere cries to God will cause God to reverse the negative situations in your life and do that which is favorable towards you. Hebrews 13 and 8 lets us know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. If God did it for Hannah, he will do it for you. So don't stop praying. The Lord is nigh. Don't stop praying. He will hear your cry. The Lord is promised. His word is true. Don't stop praying. He will definitely answer you. And what we have to know is sometimes his answer is yes. Sometimes his answer is no. Sometimes his answer is not now, but God will definitely answer your prayer. And I pray that something that I said caused you to be blessed. Keep safe and stay home if you have to. Amen.